first of all, data has informed um, our, our mission. And uh, there's a very good study that came out a few years ago. For in the, in the case of the U.S., U.S., believe it or not, has nearly one in two pregnancies among American women is unintended. Um, so there was a study looking at if, um, if a couple were to do all of the things that we know to do to um, reduce our emissions, how does that compare to choosing to have one fewer child? And it turns out that choosing to have one fewer child is going to have a greater impact than everything else that a couple could do, uh, installing solar or uh, taking public transit, reducing waste, et cetera, all of that combined. So that's in the U.S. context where we have, um, you know, high emissions per person. But I think that that's really important to keep in mind. Um, and I use the word choosing, you know, very deliberately. We're talking about free choice. Um, but it is something that couples um, should think about. Um, and like I said, in the U.S., a lot of it has to do with, because of the high uh, numbers of unintended pregnancies, um, we know that there are things that can work to, to uh, improve couples' access to methods and information to, um, to be able to achieve their desired family size. So um, the other data that we've used to help inform our work is um, from the Sahel. So in this region, if you look at, so we're talking about countries like Senegal, Mauritania, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, et cetera, all the way over to Ethiopia and Eritrea. Most of our work is in the Francophone part of the region, but these are countries um, with low contraceptive prevalence rates. So um, very um, low use of especially modern contraception and low use of traditional contraception as well. Um, especially in the heart of the Sahel, like Niger, Chad, Burkina Faso, and Mali, women have um, very, very little decision-making power over their lives. Uh, so there are ways to quantify this, actually, like if a woman can leave the house without permission, um, if a woman has control over household resources, if a woman can refuse sex. So um, uh, on the other hand, what I think is a good opportunity is the data that we have about unmet need for family planning. So that's an indicator that says, um, asks women, do you want to have a, um, a child within the next two years? And if they do not want to be pregnant or have a kid in the next two years, but are not using any contraceptive method, then we say that they have an unmet need for family planning. It's not a perfect data point, but it's, it's quite useful. So, um, in the Sahel region, on average, um, there uh, for every current user, for every current modern contraceptive user, there are two to three times as many women who say that they want to either space or stop having children, but they're not using any method. So for us in the family planning world, that's a huge opportunity. There's also a huge opportunity to keep girls in school, which delays marriage and has effects on fertility in addition to all of the other benefits that come from educating girls. So um, that's a bit about how we've used data help to help shape our work. What we're trying to do now in the Sahel, for instance, is really understand what's going to work for girls and women. So what's going to work to keep girls in school and delay marriage and delay childbearing? And what's going to work to help women separate having sex from having children if they so desire? So um, in other words, what's going to work to increase the contraceptive prevalence rate? Um, and there's still a lot of unknowns on that latter part. So um, our goal is to try to give girls and women what they want, and we use data in various ways to, to help achieve that. Is your data primarily collected through surveys, or what's the, the primary form there? Yeah, so we have, so some of the indicators that I just mentioned are mostly collected by the demographic and health surveys that our, are implemented every I don't know, maybe five years or so in developing countries. And um, we're doing, in the Sahel, we're doing both a formative research and operations research. Um, so we have uh, some really talented ethnographic um, researchers on our team, and they're looking at questions about, um, well, for example, um, in women's empowerment. So what, um, how do women in, in rural Niger, for instance, understand empowerment? Do they have this concept? What does an empowered look, woman look like? And what are the pathways to get there? 